On April 5th, we were $23.9 trillion in debt, and by May 4th, we were $25 trillion in debt. Now our national debt is rapidly speeding toward the $26 trillion mark, and the House of Representatives just passed a bill that would borrow and spend an additional $3 trillion. How many trillions did Uncle Sammy just borrow into existence? How many more trillion will he borrow into existence this fiscal year? The government is the borrower of last resort, and the central bank will lend to infinity and beyond. Tons more debt, two months of economic paralysis, and it's happening worldwide. This isn't the cause of the world's debt problems, but it might be the excuse needed for the actual cure. Namely, repudiation of all debt incurred, the exclusion of the guilty financiers, which is most of them, and an economic shock therapy all across the board. A society like that is going to have no time for social justice warriors at any level, from lawyers to human resources to big tech to governments. You produce, or you stay out of the way, but you are not going to be the load. Or, you can bleed the native population dry to support the parasites until the thing explodes. I know which solution the elites will favor, obviously, but I think this time they might be in trouble. The virus was the unforeseen event that is toppling the banker's house of cards. Like a credit card junkie, juggling dozens of cards expertly, until something causes him to lose his job. Then boom. We have reached the tipping point and the money can be created from nothing, and debt doesn't matter fairy tale. What's interesting about this current depression compared to the several recessions and the Great Depression, is that the economy was shitting the bed before every economy shut down. The 1920s is referred to as the Roaring Twenties, due to the eruption of wealth that occurred in America, and it was followed by a collapse, because the stock market became inflated well above that wealth. There isn't wealth this time. We started in the negative, and we've gone even more negative. Money is, 1, a store of value that enables workers to save for retirement or adverse events, and, 2, a way of facilitating transactions that is more efficient than barter. Comparing gold to fiat, fake, fraud, fiction, fantasy currency is like comparing dog to pig. Priced in gold, the US dollar is down 1% for the week, 3.3% for the month, and down 24% for the year. Fiat can be printed. Gold cannot. The value of the dollar, measured in real goods, has been continuously falling since 1913. Yes, sometimes faster than others, but always falling. To measure one fiat currency against others is fundamentally bogus. The reason is obvious. That gives the impression something is increasing, value of the dollar, when, in fact, that something is decreasing, value of the dollar. Since precious metals are manipulated out the wazoo the past few decades, a chart against them isn't accurate either. So one would need to revert to measures against baskets of fundamental goods. Which means goods that are necessary, or near necessary, to basic life, and have been for centuries, or at least many decades. All that's needed to assure the dollar descend at an even faster rate, is for the Federal Reserve to create and widely distribute substantial quantities of fiat, fake, fraud, fiction, fantasy, fractional reserve debt bits, which they are doing in spades lately. Negative interest rates are not required to trash the dollar. And I believe the Federal Reserve will not resort to negative interest rates, unless some extremely powerful force literally forces them to. To not have negative interest rates will be one of their justifications for why the dollar should remain the global default currency. To pay 1% or 2% interest on debts is no problem when you can create even more unlimited quantities of fiat at any moment at zero cost. Money can be printed. Wealth cannot. Wealth would be whatever people perceive as having intrinsic value. Even gold up until the electronics age was only a perceived value for the most part. If it weren't for its use in electronics, I doubt its value would be as high as it is currently. My personal opinion on earthly wealth is as follows. It is anything that can be measured in acres, calories, or round counts. In other words, if you can't live on off in it, eat it, or defend yourself with it, you can probably write it off as perceived wealth. Trillions in debt are impossible to pay back. And since there's no stopping it, we might as well demand it go to Americans, be it debt jubilee, student loan cancellation, or neat bucks. I don't care anymore. At least we get fiat notes to turn into real assets before the debt usury system goes tango uniform. Printing money means stealing wealth from the public, the currency holders. The commercial banks and the central banks, who print money, are horrendous thieves. They clandestinely expropriate the public for their own private benefit. The current situation is the most extreme stealing the world has ever seen. And it will get worse until the public stands up. Monetary inflation will likely lead to waymer style outcome. Currency debasement, inflation, likely hyperinflation, and in the near term, an asset price reflation. The Fed, like all failed government central planning operations, will end when both its policies have destroyed the nation, and when people no longer believe in the premises under which it was created. 
Given the absolute record of failure and train of wreckage central planning has left behind, it is truly extraordinary that generation after generation, we continue to try it. Until the passengers on the bus call the economy, start yelling at the driver to slow down or stop the crazy stuff, the bus will continue down the hill gathering speed, until it reaches a point where no internal adjustment of policy settings will prevent a crash. Okay, let's say the US Treasury kicks the party off by announcing that they're not paying back the money foreign nations loaned us, but they at least don't opt for the far worse nuclear route of defaulting on domestic lenders. Great, that was easy, right? Except that every container ship headed our way would turn around and head back to home port, cause the US is no longer a paying customer. At the same time, US Treasury yields go ballistic, and the Fed must step in to buy up 100% of US government debt issuance, plus all of the domestic holders who are dumping by the truckload. Wait, did you seriously think this would end the Fed? The Fed's now the buyer of all resort. Their power and scope over the US economy and our personal finance are now limitless. There's no more foreign demand for dollars, so it collapses inside of a week, and consumer prices go up exponentially, as shortages of everything occur at the same time that the dollars rapidly loses value. After a sell everything panic, gold and silver dumps but then goes stratospheric. Yay. But when it comes to actually buy anything with it over the short term, your average Joe wants physical cash, not precious metals because, after all, that's all he's ever known. I hope you have several years of cash laying around because your job's likely toast while the government starts doling out far too little to make ends meet against the tidal wave of inflation. Since prices will be skyrocketing, a good rule of thumb might be 5 years of cash, living expenses will last you around a year. What does all this end up looking like after a half decade? Well, you got a worthless local currency, the central bank monetizing everything, no import-export channels, local producers bankrupt after the US government implements pricing fixing, spot electricity, cellular and internet, and possibly a draft due to war on US soil. So essentially third world living conditions under a radical socialist government, while an infantile entitled American public holds mass protests equally as, ineffective as those in Venezuela. Once enough mass starvation has transpired, and a significant percentage of the population has relearned useful sustenance skills, there might eventually be enough momentum built up for a proper uprising within a generation, give or take. The only thing a reset accomplishes is the end of the US government's ability to pawn off worthless dollars for real goods from the rest of the world. For the clueless out there, it's the equivalent of turning off your main circuit breaker, because you don't want to put next month's electric bill on a credit card. Putting aside the fact that the government lies about inflation in the last 12 years, if money creation and total supply have been going down since the Great Recession, why have prices continued to go up? Why have we been seeing shrinkflation? Other than electronics, I can't really think of anything that is cheaper today than it was in 2008. Even the price of gold has gone up significantly since 2008. Almost all the gold traded in today's markets is actually paper derivatives and fraudulent guarantees. If you can't touch it, you definitely don't own it. And even some things you can touch, you still might not own, for example, a house with a mortgage. When you cannot clear a trade at the market price, as has been common recently, the market price is being manipulated. Every market has supply and demand. You don't have to control the supply to control the market, particularly if the supply is predictable. Money is debt. You can argue that if it's given to the little guy to pay down debts to banksters that it's less comparative debt, but it's still debt. Printing money is inflationary. Fiat currency is debt. Commercial banks have the power to create money by issuing debt. In fact, money is a non-interest bearing debt. Given that all money is debt, the existing debt cannot be wiped out by printing money, because the newly printed money was borrowed into existence. At best, it just changes whose balance sheet the debt is on. Printing money is inflationary. The new dollars are further debt themselves by the time they're printed, so this isn't decreasing debt, it's more like an economic heart going into overdrive to try to compensate for plummeting blood pressure. That leads toward hyperinflation rather than being a cause of deflation. Broad money is made up of bank deposits, which are essentially IOWAS from commercial banks to households and companies, and currency, mostly IOWAS from the central bank. Of the two types of broad money, bank deposits make up the vast majority, 97% of the amount currently in circulation. And in the modern economy, those bank deposits are mostly created by commercial banks themselves. Commercial banks create money in the form of bank deposits, by making new loans. When a bank makes a loan, for example, to someone taking out a mortgage to buy a house, it does not typically do so by giving them thousands of pounds worth of banknotes. Instead, it credits their bank account with a bank deposit of the size of the mortgage. At that moment, new money is created. For this reason, some economists have referred to bank deposits as fountain pen money, created at the stroke of bankers' pens when they approve loans. 
I've always loved the term imaginary millions, money made in the imagination of the usurers. The economy is usury, and that's all it is. All get America back to work means is oh god, don't let the payments stop. Rescuing the economy with more debt is foolish. I'm very long in the tooth gold bug, but sound money does offer a way out after the debts are cancelled by executive order. If Franklin D. Roosevelt could cancel gold contracts in 1933, Trump can cancel floating rate notes contracts in 2020. Interest that needs to be paid back on these created deposits is ever so conveniently left out of that equation. And that interest creates new debt as it comes due. Banksters thought they created the perpetual motion money machine. Debt money creates more debt money by its very nature. Until the debts are not honored. Debt money deflation means the free ride is over for banksters. They will do everything in their power to prevent deflation. Right now, everywhere two or more banksters gather, they are trying to figure out how to print more borrowers. Some will embrace zero or negative lending rates, just to keep the carousel spinning a bit longer, in the hopes of getting out themselves before the crash. If any of those guys are watching this video, sign me up for a few billion, non-recourse, naturally. But let's spell out the nature of the free ride. Bankers make their cut on the default when real property is seized over fictitious obligations. It's a game of musical chairs, except somebody loses their collateral or livelihood when the music stops. It's not simply usury. It's usury with spiky glowing green gold hair and serious social issues. The finance system of banking or commercial paper or debt and risk swapping has gotten so complex and intertwined that I cannot imagine anyone accurately knowing how it will react. The complexity and sheer size make me think it might be fragile, but it has so many people all trying to work their little portion of it that I hope it might be a bit Hayekian, and all the leeches trying to suck more from their part keep the parts working, much like any adaptable system motivated by people. However, it is crapped out before, and some people stand to gain by it crapping out, so they will or might be working for it to default. I really cannot tell what is inside of the constantly changing black box. Modern finance is dealing with literal make-believe money. GDP calculation is proof of this because debt contributes to GDP. And even worse is that economists are unable to distinguish between debt and equity as sources of financing when the layman can tell you straight away how they are different. The collapse of credit is the relevant indicator, not the issuance of script currency. Debt is issued out of thin air, so inflation occurs when a debt is created. Printing money to pay the debt, by definition, only occurs after the debt exists. Debt exists first, then money, which is why printing money is deflationary. That said, prices for some things might increase because supply collapses relative to demand, like beef and pork, but on the whole, the price of most things will collapse, like new cars, clothes at bankrupt retailers, etc. Note that increasing prices for specific things is driven by particular issues, but the general price level is guided by monetary policy. Spending more on everything is due to inflation. Gold is a manipulated market. Those prices are the result of interventionism, not a stable currency. The real remaining prop of the dollar is the fact that it is still the primary currency for oil purchases, forcing anyone who wants oil to buy dollars. That's why China, Russia, et al. are so eager to set up systems for settling petrotransactions in their own currencies. QE to infinity to cover the quadrillion dollars corruption of the bankster cartel began on 11 September last year, the repos went to hundreds of billions within weeks, and this CV-19 PSYOP is cover for the bankruptcy, greater depression, and NWO depopulation agenda. Those are Fed asset transfer periods and not cycles. They will continue the process until all assets are theirs. The US is being colonized by a domestic enemy. The bankrupting of America was planned for over a century ago, and nothing that we can do will stop it. The bottom line is that they must bankrupt the country and the three tiers of the middle class in order to bring about their new world order. All going as planned. The quickest way to kill the US and transform it into a big piece of the new world order scientific technocracy is to kill the economy, make people poor. No more disposable income, no more well-paying jobs, no more credit, no more tangible assets, no more goodies that make life enjoyable. These politicians, corporate chieftains, bureaucratic managers, etc., know what they are doing. They're bought and paid for by the ruling cabal to engineer the takeover of the US poor, hungry, homeless, isolated, simple-minded people, make good targets for the social engineers and scientific elite. They've been working on creating targets, and now they will be shooting the targets with vaccines to keep you safe. The only thing you need to be kept safe from is them. It's funny, Nancy Reagan's 1980s slogan, just say no to drugs, actually is precisely what we need now to this fascist tyranny. Big corporations or big government running our lives. Just say no. Don't do what they tell you to do, you can trust, but you better verify. So this begs the question, how does the average guy prepare for such a situation? How can one best weather the coming storm? This is what I have done. 
First, get out of debt, including paying off your house so you can't be manipulated. Get out of debt. Second, accumulate capital in forms that cannot be confiscated or manipulated. Land and skills. Own real property, not in a city. Have skills to build businesses that don't require massive capital and can be cash flowed and operate without debt, even if you have to stay small. Employees add a lot of overhead costs. Get married, have children, homeschool them. Train your sons to go toward trades or college with actual skills and job prospects. Train your daughters to be excellent homemakers and home economists and help marry them off early. Don't gamble in the stock market. Read more books. Own good tools and know how to use them. Live within your means. Make that a long-term life philosophy instead of looking for shortcuts and secret edges to exploit. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe and healthy.